All right. Hi guys, uh, Mr. Wilder here, and uh, we're going to talk today about uh, the seven principles of economic thinking. And uh, this is uh, kind of the basic foundation of uh, kind of why economists think like they do, why you should think like an economist, and uh, how you can start thinking like an economist by understanding these seven principles. Okay. The first principle we're going to talk about is called scarcity forces trade-offs. Okay. So this is number one. And it's good that this is number one because kind of the basic principle of economics is this idea of scarcity. Scarcity is just this idea that we have uh, unlimited uh, wants, okay, but we have limited resources. We always want more of stuff, uh, but we have a limited amount of resources available to us, whether it's money, time, uh, oil, diamonds, whatever. Uh, we're limited on that, so scarcity forces us to make trade-offs all the time. Um, on the weekend, uh, scarcity of time might force you to make trade-offs. Maybe you have to work, maybe you want to be with your friends, uh, maybe your family expects you to spend time with them. There's a limited amount of time you have, and that forces you to make some trade-offs. Maybe you spend a little less time with your friends to be able to go out to dinner with your family or something like that. Um, maybe you're going to spend less time with your friends so you have time to study. Uh, all those are uh, ideas of scarcity forcing you to make trade-offs. Okay, And it happens to us all the time. Sometimes you have a limited amount of money, right? And uh, especially around Christmas time, and that's going to force you to make some trade-offs. Uh, maybe you're not going to buy your mom as nice a gift uh, because you also want to get your uh, little sister a gift. And so it's going to force you to make some trade-offs of what you can actually get your mom. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense to you. Our second uh, principle is the idea of cost versus benefits. Okay? Again, this is a pretty... Uh, Pretty basic principle. Number two, costs versus benefits. And this is one I think you guys have experienced all throughout your life. Uh, anytime we're thinking about doing something, we always look at how much that's going to cost us, okay, versus how much of a benefit we're going to get from it uh, by doing by doing whatever it is. All right. So, what's the cost of uh, going to the football game? Well, it's the price of admission, uh, the cost of your ticket, uh, the cost of concessions, whatever, the time that you're going to spend at the football t football game. All those things are the cost of going to the football game. Uh, the benefits. Well, uh, you're with your friends, maybe you're cheering on your favorite team. Uh, it's an activity you really like to do and you have fun at. Uh, whatever. So the the benefits of going to the football game. For most of us, if we choose to go to the football game, outweigh the costs. Okay, but if we choose not to go to the football game, well, then the costs are too high. Okay, the benefits—we don't get enough benefit from it to actually do the activity or uh, to make that decision. All right. So we always weigh cost versus benefits. Um, maybe when you're buying a car. Okay, what's the what's the cost of buying a brand new car versus the benefits of it? Okay, if there's not enough benefits from buying a brand new car. Well, then maybe you're going to buy a used car instead, okay? And you're, uh, then the costs are more equal to the benefits, okay? But we always do that. We always weigh the cost versus benefits anytime we're making a decision, especially an economic decision, okay? Let's look at our third principle. Remember, there's seven of these. Uh, the third principle is thinking on the margin, okay? So let's go to number three. Thinking on margin. Okay? Alright, thinking on the margin is really simple. We're always making decisions based on how much extra benefit we're going to get from doing more of something. Alright? So for instance, uh, when you're eating pizza, okay, what's the best slice of pizza you're going to have? Probably the first slice of pizza. But usually we have a second slice because if we're thinking on the margin, we're like, well, I'm still getting some benefit. I'm still hungry. It still tastes good. That's awesome. Maybe I'm going to eat a third, fourth, fifth piece of pizza. But at some point, if we're thinking at the margin, then maybe we're not going to get enough benefit from adding another slice in our stomach, okay, another slice of pizza. So we stop eating it. That's thinking on the margin, okay? Or if we do add another piece of pizza, we're still thinking on the margin. We're still getting enough benefit from it. So anytime you're buying something, anytime you're doing something, we're usually thinking on the margin. How much extra benefit am I going to get from that? If you're binge watching Netflix, you know, how much benefit are you going to get from watching another episode of Breaking Bad or whatever show that you're, that you're following on Netflix? That you're thinking on the margin. Do I want to spend another 45 minutes watching this? Am 
I get enough benefit from it. If you're thinking on the margin, that's what you're doing. Okay, if you're thinking about how much extra benefit you're going to get. All right, so that's thinking on the margin. Our fourth principle, kind of flying right through these. And again, if you need to stop the tape or anything to go back over these, feel free to do that. Our fourth uh, principle is incentives matter. Okay, so let's be number four. Incentives matter. Oh my gosh, I think this is so true. This is so true. Uh, why do we do most of the things we do? It's because we have an incentive to do it. Why do you go sh guys show up for school? Well, the incentives matter. Maybe the incentive is you just don't want to get grounded, okay? Or you don't want to get in trouble with your parents, or you don't want to go, uh, you know, have to see your probation officer because you're supposed to be in, be in school. Whatever. The incentive matters for you. For a lot of you going to school, the incentive is you know you're going to make more money if you, if you have a high school, high school degree. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to go to school, you're going to get your high school degree so you can make more money. A lot of you know the incentive is you have to have a high school degree to get into college. Um, so you're going to stay in high school, get that degree so you can go to college and get the job that you want. But the incentives matter. I hazard to guess, and I'm pretty sure about this, if, I, if you guys walked in the first day of uh, econ and I said, hey, I'm going to teach you all about economics, but I don't give a grade, and you're not going to get credit for this class. Okay? How many would show up the next day? I would guess a lot of you would not be here. That'd probably be an empty room I'd be teaching to. Because the incentive of the grade really matters to you guys. The incentive of a credit matters to you. If we take away those incentives, a lot of you are going to choose not to take economics. Okay? So incentives matter. When you go to work, what's the incentive? For, mo for a lot of us, we might really enjoy the work, we might enjoy the people we're at, but really the big incentive is we're getting paid. Okay? If you weren't getting paid, if your boss said, hey, we're not paying you for this month of work, most of you aren't going to show up. That's incentives matter. Okay. Let's go to number five. Okay. Our fifth, uh, fifth principle of economics uh, is trade makes people better off. Okay? So number five, trade makes people better off. Okay. This is a pretty simple concept. It's just the idea that because we can trade for the things we want, we're all better off for that. Okay? I'm able to trade whatever skill I have as a teacher, as my knowledge of economics and social studies, I can trade that with the Council Bluffs Community School Districts for money. Okay? And that makes me better off because I can use that money to pay my bills, to buy cars, to buy houses, to send my kids to school, all those kinds of things. But trade makes me better off. Okay? If I wasn't able to trade my knowledge and skill for that, well, then how would I get the money that I need to pay for all those things I want? I'd have to produce those things myself. So trade has made me better off. When you think of uh, all the things that you use money to trade with, and now we use money to trade with, we don't barter as much as we used to, uh, but all those things we trade for with our money, we're much better off with that stuff, right? If we had to produce all that stuff ourselves, uh, if we had to uh, figure out another way to get that besides trading, we'd be in a world of hurt probably. We would not have the type of economy we have, we would not have as, uh, as nice a school as we have, we wouldn't live in as nice homes as you live in. So trade has made us better off. We can specialize in a skill, we can trade for that, and get the things we want. Okay? Most of you are going to go to school and go to college uh, to specialize in a skill, to have some sort of skill, whether it's being a plumber, an electrician, a teacher, a lawyer, a doctor. You can specialize that and you can trade that skill for all the things that you want. Trade has made you better off. Okay? Alright, let's move on to number six. Number six is markets coordinate trade. Let's go red. Six markets coordinate trade. Okay, in our society, we have set up different markets to coordinate the trading of, of uh, different goods and different skills. Okay, so because we have those those uh, markets coordinate trade. Again, that allows us to get the things we want, whether it's a supermarket like hy V that allows us to get groceries in one spot that makes it very convenient for us to uh, trade for those things, or it's a mall that we go to to buy different things we need, um, or it's the internet uh, that coordinates trade, different websites like Amazon and uh, eBay and places like that. 
those markets coordinate trade. The stock market coordinates trade, allows us to uh, invest in different companies and businesses. All those things coordinate trade. And because we have those markets, we're able to trade easier and faster and quicker with other countries, with each other, and that kind of thing. So markets coordinate trade. That's another principle of economic thinking. Okay? Uh, our last one is future consequences count. Okay? This is a hard one for uh, high school students to uh, kind of wrap their head around, but let's talk about it real quick. So what is this? This is number seven, right? Yep. Okay, future consequences count. Future consequences count. All right, so a lot of times when we make a decision, especially an economic decision, we don't always think of what the future consequences are of that decision, but they do matter, and they're going to matter in the future. Okay? So, for instance, when you make a decision to go uh, speeding uh, you know, on the interstate, all right, and you decide you want to get there five minutes faster or ten minutes faster, you make that decision, you get pulled over by the police. Okay? So the police pull you over give you a ticket. Okay? That's a big bummer, right? Okay? But you're like, well, you know, whatever, I, I knew I might get a ticket. But the future consequence that counts is what? A lot of times a month down the road, what do we see on our insurance bill? All of a sudden our insurance went up because you got that speeding ticket. All right? That's that idea of future consequence count. You really, don't really think about that when you're speeding. You're not thinking about, ah, oh, my insurance rate might go up. Okay? But that's something that could happen. Future consequences do count. Anytime we make an economic decision, the future consequences count. If you would choose to drop out of school, school okay? Maybe you hate school. That's fine. So you drop out of high school. What's the future consequence? Well, now you've kind of limited yourself on the type of jobs you can get, how much money you can make at those jobs. Uh, you could become very successful as a high school dropout, but most people don't. And most people that do drop out don't think about those future consequences. They're just thinking about the immediate, I hate school, I hate my teachers, or I'm just not good at school, there's no way I can get, get through it, whatever. Uh, but they're not thinking about the future consequences of that decision. Okay. So future consequences do count, especially when it comes to economics. All right. Uh, hopefully uh, that's a pretty good, it gives you a little bit of a better understanding of the seven principles of economic thinking. In your textbook, this is on pages 7 through 11, or I think page 6, is, six through 11, if you want to go back and read through those on your own, uh, you can do that. Uh, but I think uh, if you kind of rewind and listen to the video, uh, you should have a good, good understanding of those seven principles and be ready for class tomorrow. All right. Awesome. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for listening to me ramble on about the seven economic principles. And uh, other than that, have a good night. Goodbye. See ya. Adios. All right, we're done. Bye-bye.